Local news about local people. This is Newslink Indiana. Hello, I'm Chris Bavender. Thanks for joining us. An investigation at the Muncie Youth Opportunity Center after a five-year-old boy said he was molested by his 18-year-old roommate. Newslink Indiana's Aaron Schweitzer has more. Saturday, a five-year-old Muncie boy told staff members at the Youth Opportunity Center his 18-year-old roommate had molested him. The child's mom believes him. He's five. He didn't come up with, with what he said on his own. I mean, it happened. And he were, like I said, three days later, he repeated the exact same thing to me in front of staff. Child Protective Services is now investigating the report. You know, CPS is supposed to be protecting my kids. They're the one that took them. It's protecting them from me. Uh, they were never in that kind of danger at home. I mean, nothing like that it would have ever happened. I left the state. I violated a court order. There were some issues a year ago. The child, his two brothers, and a sister were placed at the YOC by the courts in November. At first, the five-year-old roomed with his siblings, but that didn't last. And in this situation, we had to separate the, the younger siblings because of some behavior problems that we were having. And so, again, we just tried to make the best room assignments that we could at the time. The five-year-old's new assignment, the room with the 18-year-old. State policy, however, says younger children cannot room with older children. But YOC officials say they had no reason to suspect there would be problems. There was nothing in the history to suggest that there were any concerns, and that's why he was placed in Cottage One instead of a more restricted program. In Muncie, Aaron Schweitzer, Newslink, Indiana. The case is still under investigation. The children were moved to foster care. The Muncie Disaster Recovery Center will enter a new phase Saturday. The emphasis will switch from FEMA to the Small Business Administration. Homeowners and businesses hit by the January ice storms and flooding can get information on low interest loans. As of Friday morning, the center had already helped 300 residents. Although the center is switching services, FEMA representatives will still be on hand. And next week, SBA was having a workshop in this, in this place, and there'll be two FEMA representatives here to continue processing for assistance for people in this community. The center is located on Memorial Drive at EMS Station 3 and is open from 10 until 7. Before going to Recovery Center for Loan or Assistance, FEMA says you need to call and register at 1-800-621-3362. From the classroom to the boardroom, area Boy Scouts left the books behind Friday and went to work. Newslink Indiana's Chris Wilson has more. It was a chance for Delaware County and Muncie City officials to work with some of Muncie's best, Boy Scouts. We learned so much from um, reading a book or their studies in school. But they, now they can actually go and see how a, a real city government operates. How 22 junior high students dominated by their fellow scouts participated in the annual Boy Scouts and Government Day. They spent time shadowing everyone from the mayor to the fire chief. And I think it's just as enjoyable too as for the department heads to, to get a chance to interact with, with the kids and the scouts. The boys started their day with breakfast at the American Legion Post downtown, then marched to City Hall where they were greeted by the mayor's staff and then met the person they'd go to work with. 7th grader Greg Hatton shadowed Fire Chief Gary Lucas and his deputy Larry Carter. Chief Deputy Larry Carter of the Muncie Fire Department has participated in the program for 14 years and says it's a great chance to show a younger generation what it's like to be a firefighter. Get a little idea what it takes and what it, to be a firefighter and, and the things firefighters have to, to be up on. Carter showed off the station's equipment, fire trucks and even let Hatton climb on board. Hatton says being a Boy Scout opens doors to opportunities like this. You get to do a lot of camping and you get to want stuff that you would never want if you weren't a Boy Scout. In Muncie, Chris Wilson, Newslink, Indiana. The Scouts were also given a tour of Delaware County's justice system. College-bound students and their parents can get free help filling out financial aid applications Sunday. College School Sunday is planned for 34 sites across the state, including Anderson University. AU Director of Student Financial Services Kenneth Neiman says the event can help put students' minds at ease. If they are the least bit anxious about filling out this form or if they're needing financial aid, uh, this is a session uh, for them. Other local sites for College Goal Sunday include Marion High School, Ivy Tech in Richmond, and Ball State. The event starts at 2. Applicants need to bring their W-2s. For more information, you can go to collegegoalsunday.org. A hidden treasure at Taylor University is set to make its TV debut when the Rice Cal Creamer Collection appears on the Food Network show Unwrapped. The collection contains about 250 creamers. It was donated in 1978 by alumni Raymond and Garnet Rice. 
The creamers are made from a variety of materials, including porcelain, sterling silver, and plastic, and are from countries including Japan, Germany, and England. Taylor officials say the collection has sparked a lot of interest. I think it's one of those things that there weren't a lot of people that knew we actually had it, and so there's been a growing interest in the collection. And so as you can see behind me, we have uh, a number of our finer pieces that are on display right now. And so yeah, it's generated some interest, and, and it's, it's a very good thing. The segment will air February 21st on the Food Network. Showtime is set for 9 p.m. Well, Ina Segal joins us now with a look at our weather and uh, a warm-up on the way, hopefully, this weekend. Yeah, we are going to see a warm-up Saturday heading into the beginning of the work week. So All right, sounds good, good to me. news. <laughs> Despite the clearing trend we saw today and the peaks of sunshine, our temperatures were pretty chilly due to the windy conditions. Our high temperature for today peaked at 33 degrees, our low 21, and our averages for this time of year are 36 and 18. Our days are getting longer because we are heading towards spring. Precision Cash is doing a great job showing us uh, what pretty much what is going on right now. High pressure moved off to the area. That's what gave us the clearing trend that we're seeing. This is our next weather system that's coming in uh, on Saturday. It's not going to do much by the way precipitation. It's going to still keep, we're still going to be in the clear, but the weather system that we need to be on the on the lookout for is the low pressure system to the west of us that's going to be bringing us our next rainmaker heading into Sunday. A quick cast and a look ahead to the weekend. We're going to see a clearing tonight, but a bit on the chilly side again, a low of 31. Saturday, we're looking at mostly sunny conditions and warmer with a high of 43. And Sunday, partly cloudy conditions, a high temperature of 49, but we are going to be seeing some rain. For tonight, be expecting to see mostly clear conditions and cold with a low temperature of 26 and winds out of the west at 9 miles per hour. But tomorrow, we are going to be seeing mostly sunny and warmer conditions, a high of 43 degrees. And our extended outlook calls for plenty of sunshine Saturday. We're looking at 43 for a high, 30 for a low. And Sunday, we are seeing 49 for a high temperature, but we are going to be seeing some rain. So some warmer temperatures at the expense of some rain. All right, thanks, Ina. Well, Valentine's Day is just a few days away, and if you still have no idea what to buy your loved one, Newslink Indiana's Derek Tucker shows you where you can get your hands on a mouth-watering treat for that special someone. Employees at Lowry's Candies in Muncie work quickly to prepare orders for Valentine's Day. The Muncie Candy Shop opened in 1941. Vicki Good has worked here since she was 14 and says the day before Valentine's Day is its busiest day. The day before and the day of, they'll be lined clear out to the parking lot about 15 minutes before we open the door. And then it's that way all day long. Good's parents bought the chocolate shop in 1964. It sells nearly 85 different kinds of chocolate. Lowry's even whips up special requests. We had one man that had a heart. He gave the same heart box to his wife for like 30 years. He'd bring it in every year. And we'd pack it for him. And then she passed away, so the last year he even got it and put it on her tombstone. Lowry's is one of the few candy shops that still makes their candy by hand. And each kind of candy has a specific mark. But trust me, it's not easy. On the busiest days, as many as 30 employees work together to cut the candy, roll and dip. Now wouldn't you like to get your hands in here? Look at this and package the candy. And we do get to eat a piece once in a while, but not on the job. But although the hours can be long sometimes. Uh, well, we all like Valentine's the best because it's uh, more men and men aren't as picky as women. One and a half or two pound heart boxes are the most popular and sell for 20 to $30. The biggest item, an eight pound heart box for 180 bucks. For those who can't spend quite that much, there are Valentine's specials for as little as $5. In Muncie, Derek Tucker, Newslink, Indiana. And Lowry's will even put uh, engagement rings in their chocolates. They're open Saturday from 10 until 5 and Sunday from 10 until 3. That is Newslink, Indiana. For Ina Segal, I'm Chris Bavender. Thanks for joining us. Join us again Monday for more news at newslinkindiana.com.